the invention of nuclear weapons ranks as one of the key developments in human history. For the first time, all-out warfare risked not only the destruction of civilization, but the radioactive poisoning of the planet itself. America's attacks against the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945 demonstrated that the catastrophic effects of even a small atomic bomb were horrific in the extreme. After the atomic bomb blast that virtually erased this city of 340,000 people from the earth, as far as the eye can see, stretch scenes of desolation and ruin. Four square miles leveled by one bomb. Fearing widespread destruction in the days ahead, and shocked by the simultaneous invasion of its territory by the Soviet Union, the Japanese government quickly surrendered, thereby ending World War II. Less than a year later, the U.S. military detonated two more atomic bombs during Operation Crossroads, conducted at the newly created Pacific Proving Grounds. By then, the Soviets, once allies of the U.S., were considered a threat to the Western democracies in the post-war world. President Harry Truman and his advisors concluded that America's possession of large numbers of atomic weapons would keep the Russian communists in check and authorized crash programs devoted to ongoing testing and mass production. On August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union detonated its own atomic bomb much sooner than expected. The nuclear arms race had begun in earnest. To make matters worse, by the early 1950s, the newly invented hydrogen bombs, some of them a thousand times more powerful than atomic weapons, began to be tested in remote areas of the planet by the new nuclear superpowers and their allies. Mankind's future never looked bleaker. Intriguingly, this grim state of affairs led to a still unexplained mystery. As difficult as this will be for some people to accept, evidence uncovered by researchers confirms that technologically advanced observers, whose identity and intentions remain unknown, began to monitor the nuclear standoff almost from the start. Declassified U.S. government documents reveal that as early as December 1948, incursions by mysterious aerial objects later referred to as UFOs, began to occur at American nuclear laboratories, bomb storage depots, weapons test areas, and, as time went on, intercontinental ballistic missile sites. Particularly dramatic are the incidents now being openly discussed by former U.S. Air Force ICBM launch officers who were stationed at various strategic air command bases in the 1960s and 70s. According to these highly credible witnesses, on some occasions, as the UFOs briefly hovered over their launch facilities, the nuclear missiles inexplicably malfunctioned. The officers had been on alert in their underground launch control capsules when they received telephone calls from their security guards at ground level, saying that they were observing one or more unidentified disc-shaped craft maneuvering in the sky. Seconds later, as many as 10 ICBMs suddenly shut down, according to warning lights on the officers' missile readiness consoles, meaning that they could not have been launched if the President of the United States had, at that moment, ordered a nuclear attack on America's adversaries. These witnesses say that their superiors ordered them to keep quiet about the incidents, and in some cases, required them to sign non-disclosure statements, which stipulated severe legal penalties for anyone who violated secrecy. Significantly, dramatic UFO incidents were also occurring at nuclear missile facilities in the former Soviet Union, including cases where the weapons suddenly malfunctioned. Documents obtained in Russia by Western journalists in the 1990s, as well as on-the-record statements by Soviet Army veterans, summarize the unsettling events in great detail. 
These revelations make clear that both American and Soviet nuclear missiles were subjected to ongoing surveillance and from time to time deliberate tampering by whoever was piloting the UFOs during the long tense confrontation known as the Cold War. In the years that followed, other UFO incidents continued to occur at various nukes-related locations throughout the U.S. According to declassified documents, two B-52 bomber bases, Loring Air Force Base, Maine, and Wurtsmith Air Force Base, Michigan, were targeted by unknown aerial craft in late October 1975. Although initial reports referred to unidentified helicopters, one witness at Loring, Sergeant Stephen Eichner, later wrote that he had observed, quote, an elongated football as long as four cars and reddish-orange in color, briefly hovering near the nuclear weapons storage area. The object then zoomed away. One week later, back at Malmstrom Air Force Base, as many as seven UFOs were sighted and tracked on radar as they intermittently maneuvered near and hovered above various Minuteman missile sites over a several hour period. According to numerous North American Aerospace Defense Command log entries released via the Freedom of Information Act, the UFOs were also unsuccessfully pursued by F-106 jet fighters before finally leaving the vicinity. One of the craft was apparently close enough to the ground to be described by security forces as a, quote, orange-white disk object. At the Pentagon, the National Military Command Center was so alarmed by the UFO incursions at Strategic Air Command bomber and missile bases that a Security Option 3 order was issued, placing the Air Force's entire nuclear weapons force on high alert. Despite official efforts to suppress the facts, all of this eventually became known as military and intelligence agency files were involuntarily released to the public via the Freedom of Information Act. If all of this were not enough, the next major UFO event really rocked the Pentagon. In late 1980, at the RAF Bentwaters base in Suffolk, England, then leased by the U.S. Air Force, a series of bizarre incidents left no doubt that something very strange was taking place. Moreover, given the dramatic incident at the weapons storage area, when one of those UFOs reportedly directed laser-like beams down into the facility, it becomes clear that this case had a nuclear weapons connection. Significantly, another nukes-related incident in the former Soviet Union is nearly identical to Bentwater's. Government documents obtained by Western journalists after the collapse of the Soviet regime confirm numerous cases of UFO activity in that country during the Cold War era, including one at the Kapustin Yar military complex. On the night of July 28, 1989, a disc-shaped object with a dome was observed by dozens of Soviet Army personnel as it briefly hovered over the base's nuclear missile warhead depot. According to one KGB report, as the stunned witnesses watched, the UFO directed laser-like beams onto the roof of a building in which those weapons were kept before silently racing away. Another incident in the Soviet Union seven years earlier was even more shocking. On October 4th, 1982, a huge flying disc apparently activated several nuclear missiles which were then preparing to launch. According to the Soviet Ministry of Defense documents secured by American television investigative reporter George Knapp, the UFO appeared over an intermediate range missile base near the Ukrainian town of Bailokorovish. At one point, down in the underground launch control capsule, several missiles suddenly went into countdown mode. Although no one had input the authorization codes, the missiles were preparing to launch. Then, after 15 terrifying seconds, the anomaly ceased and everything returned to normal operational status. This potentially disastrous incident was nearly identical to one reported to Robert Hastings 
by former U.S. Air Force launch officer David Schur, who said that a UFO had activated the launch sequence in several of his Minuteman missiles at Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, one night in 1966. As this object passed over the missile site, we would start getting erratic indications on that missile. The bad thing was we also got a launch indicator. Does that mean that the launch sequence has been triggered? That means that the missile has received the launch signal. In that case, Schur and his commander had to flip an inhibit switch to disrupt the unauthorized countdown. But were those aboard the UFOs actually trying to start a nuclear war? Having investigated these incidents for decades, my opinion is that those who pilot the UFOs are visitors from elsewhere who are engaged in these provocative actions at American and Russian nuclear missile sites to send us a message that we humans are playing with fire, that to engage in nuclear warfare is essentially suicide. Importantly, these dramatic incidents continue to occur long after the end of the Cold War. Several U.S. Air Force veterans have reported new UFO incursions at nuclear missile sites and weapons storage areas in the very recent past. The most important case occurred on October 23, 2010. This is CNN Breaking News. The breaking news involves a power failure that shut down a major part of the U.S. nuclear missile arsenal. Let's go to our Pentagon correspondent, Chris Lawrence. Wow, Chris, what, what do we know? Well, Wolf, this happened out in Warren Air Force Base out in Wyoming, and, and bottom line is this. For less than an hour, about an hour on Saturday, uh, the base lost primary communication with about 50 intercontinental ballistic missiles. Although widespread media coverage of the incident contained no hint of any UFO reports, a subsequent investigation yielded intriguing information about a series of still unexplained sightings occurring during the communications disruption. According to confidential Air Force sources known to Robert Hastings, various missile maintenance teams responding to the problem reported observing a huge cigar-shaped object maneuvering in the sky above the missile field. These persons emphatically state that the craft was not a blimp because no passenger gondola, propellers, or stabilizing tail fins were visible, and there was no corporate logo or other advertising on its hull. The anomalous nature of the object was all but confirmed when these teams returned to the base. According to Hastings sources, the entire missile maintenance squadron was sternly admonished by its commander not to talk to journalists or researchers about, quote, the things they may or may not have seen in the sky. Despite these revelations, the Air Force officially maintains that the massive communications disruption was caused by an improperly replaced circuit card following repairs on a weapons system processor. Nevertheless, key personnel who were in a position to know the facts have described multiple independent UFO reports during the incident, which were allegedly suppressed by command level officers. This program has only scratched the surface. Declassified documents and eyewitness testimony suggests that incidents involving UFO activity at nuclear weapons sites now number in the hundreds. Robert Hastings has urged military veterans to contact him at his website regarding their knowledge of these events so that a more complete picture of the situation can emerge. He believes that people everywhere have a right to know the facts. This is history, hidden history to be sure, but tremendously important. Scientists laugh at UFOs, the media generally ignore them. Billions of people worldwide think this subject is nonsense. And yet, what has been unfolding behind the scenes for more than half a century is nothing less than astounding.